हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एस बी आर स्टूडिंग द चैप्टर नॉइज इफेक्ट्स इन कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम एंड इन दिस चैप्टर वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन व्हाट आर द नॉइज सोर्सेस एंड द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ नॉइज रजिस्टर नॉइज एंड अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ नॉइज टेम्परेचर now in this lecture i am going to tell you about the details of noise temperature in communication system now one uh, biggest parameter of noise is noise figure but generally when we deal with ultra high frequency and microwave low noise antennas receivers or devices so for dealing with these ultra high frequencies and microwave low noise antennas receivers or devices which are handling with the microwave uh, signals of low noise at that time noise figure does not help very much it does not give information very much and for these cases specifically what we have to consider we have to consider noise temperature now the noise temperature is employed extensively for the antennas and low power low noise microwave amplifiers okay so it shows greater variation what is its advantage against noise figure that i am going to tell you it shows greater variation for any given noise level change then does the noise figure it means that the noise temperature changes are easier to grasp in true perspective when we are considering antennas and low noise microwave amplifiers why we it has mentioned low noise because even there is no noise applications also in certain applications then we have to reduce that low noise also so if the noise cannot be configured then how we will able to uh, reduce it so that low noise has to be picked out so what is the noise temperature it is a parameter of noise specifically in communication system when dealing with ultra high frequency signal and microwave low noise antennas or receivers or devices at that time noise temperature shows greater variation for any noise level change any noise level change if the noise level change is of very smaller value then also the noise temperature can show greater variation in its value and that is the biggest advantage of noise temperature against noise figure and this is the formula this is the formula of noise temperature that noise temperature is equal to pn divided by kb where pn here the n should be the subscript like this it, it should be like this pn is the maximum noise power of the sources delivered over the bandwidth b means for the bandwidth b of the signal what is the maximum noise power of the source that is delivered that is pn and k is the boltzmann constant having the value 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kelvin and b is bandwidth of the signal which is passing through the receiver or catched by the antenna so this is the noise temperature and this is the formula through which the noise temperature can be calculated this k is constant we know that what is the bandwidth of the signal which is passing through the receiver or um, caught by uh, antenna and the maximum noise power can be measured so if these values are known to us then definitely we can evaluate this formula and we can find out noise temperature 
Now the next parameter that we have to study is noise bandwidth. Now what is the concept of noise bandwidth? Actually, there is a concept of filter. As we know that when we were studying the block diagram of um, uh, receiver, block diagram of receiver. So at the first stage and at the last stage, both the stages, there were filters. And what are filters? Filters are such electronic circuitry which passes certain bandwidth of signal, certain frequencies uh, can be passed uh, through the filter and others are rejected. Okay. So, uh, here in this diagram, here in this diagram, you are watching that this is a, a frequency domain diagram in which this is the zero frequency and if any signal is passing, if modulated signal is passed through the um, uh, channel or it is received at the input of the receiver, then that receiver input will have this amplitude versus frequency um, diagram that we have to study for understanding the nature of the signal. So, this is the output of the filter in, at the input stage. Now, this, these are the dotted line. These are the dotted line. These are the actual, these are the real filter, ideal filter. Ideal filter means that there is a, there is a sharp cut edge, sharp cut in edge. It means that before this edge, the signals are not passing. And at the um, uh, corner frequency, second corner frequency, this is known as corner frequency. So, after this age, uh, after this frequency, the signal will not pass. But this dashed line is the line um, which showing the range of frequencies in ideal case that uh, uh, the frequencies which are under these two dashed line those frequencies will pass through the filter only and the frequencies which are either um, this is lower cut off frequency the left one and the right side one is the higher cut off frequency so before the lower cut off frequency any frequency signal cannot pass through the filter and after the higher cut off frequency any frequency signal cannot pass the filter it means that the signals which are having the frequencies after lower cut of frequencies and below higher cut of frequencies those signals will be passed through the through the uh, ideal filter but practically practically this is the graph in which what we are watching that uh, in if the amplitude means lower amplitude signals uh, can have the wider range and the peak value, the maximum value will be at only the central frequency. This F0 means center frequency. Okay. So, here what is the difference between practical filter uh, frequency domain diagram and ideal frequency domain diagram that the ideal filter frequency domain diagram gives the rectangular graph and for the ideal uh, filter, the range of frequencies is after lower cut off frequency left side and before higher cut off frequency right side. Okay. And between this range, between this range, all the signals are passing with its maximum gain. So, here you can watch that the dashed line have the uh, same length. Means all the signals in between these two cut off frequencies, they are passing with the uh, maximum gain. But for practical filter, practical filter, practical RC circuit, we will have the maximum gain for the central frequency. 
F0. As we see that if we are receiving some radio station and uh, if it is Vivid Bharti 100.8, so when we say 100.8, that is it's a central frequency. 100.8 is a central frequency. Many times if it is 100.7 or 100.6, we will have the volume but with the reduced one. So, this is the practical filter. What the practical filter at the output stage of the receiver that this um, is not having a constant gain magnitude output. It is not having constant gain. At the central frequency, the gain is maximum and uh, in the left side of the uh, central frequency, the gain if we uh, are moving left side, so gain is decreasing and if we are moving right side, then also gain is decreasing. So this is the difference between the, between the ideal filter and uh, practical filter. Now what is noise bandwidth? If you will watch this diagram, then this is the point. Here is the arrow mark where I am making. This is the point here. The ideal filter and the practical filter both are having the same bandwidth that is BM. It means that generally the noise level is at this position. Where the ideal filter as well as the practical filter can both pass the same mag same uh, frequency signal, same noise level with the frequency signal. So, let us assume a white noise is present at the input of the receiver filter. Okay. Let the filter have a transfer function HF. What is the meaning of transfer function? Transfer function means output by input. In time domain we say gain. And frequency domain we say transfer function. It is nothing but output of the receiver divided by input of the receiver. And we know that output voltage by input voltage is gain. So in time domain we say it gain. And in frequency domain description we say it transfer function. So, here in the y-axis, the transfer function HF is taken. So, what the filter is shown in the diagram is being used to reduce the noise power actually passed on to the receiver. The aim to use the filter is to reduce the noise power. Now, consider the dotted line that is for ideal filter just now I had explained you. So, the central frequency of this ideal filter is 0. Let the bandwidth Bn of the ideal filter be adjusted in such a way that the noise output power of the ideal filter is ex exactly equal to the noise output power of a real RC filter. What is happening here? If the bandwidth Bn of the ideal filter be adjusted in such a way that the noise output power of the ideal filter is exactly equal to the noise output power of a real RC filter, then this time this BN is called as noise bandwidth of the real filter and if such type of uh, practical filter, real RC filter can be designed that it can catch the total noise such as the ideal filter, then the total noise can be avoided, filtered out with this. Okay. And this is known as the noise bandwidth. So, whenever we are designing the uh, RC filter for the uh, receiver at the input stage or at the output stage, so this noise bandwidth has to be taken in account for the designing consideration. If we know the noise bandwidth, accordingly we can choose the R and C values so that the total noise can be avoided, can be rejected. So, that is the concept of noise bandwidth. I hope you have understood. So, study it in detail. 
Thank you.